The 3.30 p.m. meeting of the Bakersfield City Council is now in session. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 3.30 special City Council meeting of August 31st, 2022. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Weir. Here. Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Parlier. Thank you. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on this afternoon's agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are also given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the city clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on this afternoon's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify a specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items listed on this afternoon's agenda? Mayor Go, we have not received any speaker cards for items listed on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Do we have any for public speakers regarding items not on the agenda? Mayor Go, we also have not received any uh, speaker cards for items not listed on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Next item, please. Item 3A, Reports, Annual Update Economic Development Strategic Plan. Thank you. Mr. Clegg. And good afternoon, Mayor and Council. We're happy to provide for you a report on progress towards our Economic Development Strategic Plan. This marks close to one year since the Council adopted our uh, Economic Development Strategic Plan. And uh, there is a robust level of detail in this plan. We're not going to hit every one of those details, but try, excuse me, but try and provide a summary that shows um, good groundwork that's been laid and good progress that's been made towards our, our 17 uh, goal areas, which just by that number, you know, it's a pretty uh, long plan. And so our economic and community development director, Paul Saldana, will walk through that with you, again, at a summary level, but we're happy to dig into questions on key areas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, a year later um, in uh, terms of providing you this update on our economic development strategic plan. So I, I want to start off with um, the slide that we actually started off with when we presented the plan to you, and this uh, really is a statement about what economic developers and economic development organizations do, and that's uh, we wake up uh, every day charged with improving the health of the local economy. And before I, I get actually into the, the report of what we've been doing, I want to acknowledge uh, some of the folks who are uh, behind me and ask that the uh, members of the ECD staff would they, that, that are here, would they please stand uh, so they can be recognized? Uh, the work that I'm going to describe today, uh, many of these folks have been involved in the design and the implementation of that, and I wanted to acknowledge that at the front end of, the, um, uh, of our presentation. So as a city manager uh, mentioned, we have a number of goals and uh, 17 various strategies uh, that uh, relate to those goals, and I'm going to go through uh, the strategies fairly uh, fairly quickly because I'm just going to highlight some of the activities that have uh, that have taken place. So this uh, first slide uh, aligns to our first strategy, which is to focus all of our business retention, expansion, and attraction efforts around high priority uh, 
uh, cluster or industry clusters. And we've done a number of work in this um, particular uh, area, and some of it will show in some of the other strategies, but among the things that we've done have included identifying target companies in each of these uh, four uh, particular areas, as well as start uh, the outreach process to uh, uh, identify companies that are in an expansion or relocation uh, mode. Uh, we continue to see an increase in the number of prospects of, of companies that are interested in expanding, uh, and our work with uh, current EDC, as an example, uh, will just continue to see that uh, opportunity um, increase. As you know, uh, probably the most significant uh, announcement that we've had over the course of this last year has been uh, the um, project that you approved with Sign Watts and their uh, relocation from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina to Bakersfield. This uh, next strategy is to collaborate and expand entrepreneurial development uh, resources. Uh, we completed, uh, or I should say Bitwise completed uh, the, their first cohort and have had a number of success, and I don't want to uh, take away from our, um, our uh, PSVS report. I know that's coming out soon, but it actually will be highlighting some of those, uh, those graduates uh, from that program. We've been designated as a, um, a iHub, an innovation hub, in partnership with CSU Fresno and the, uh, the KITE program. That will bring more resources to support entrepreneurs, uh, particularly in the southeast area. And then we've developed the framework for an ARPA-funded entrepreneurial support program, which includes uh, funding uh, to the business ecosystem that will allow them to assist some of our uh, growing entrepreneurs. So the next uh, strategy is expanding small business support and assistance. Uh, here we've uh, developed and are getting ready to implement our facade improvement program, which is uh, established through the ARPA funding uh, process. And then we've expanded the EOA funding uh, through this fiscal year in combination with PSVS as well as uh, with the ARPA funding. Uh, we have uh, staffed um, staffing of our ombudsman program, uh, which was an identified strategy is nearly complete. We actually anticipate having all of the final positions on our business success team uh, filled by uh, mid-September. The next uh, strategy is evaluating and refining our economic development incentives. Uh, one of the things that we have uh, done is procured a uh, software license that allows us to evaluate the economic benefits and the fiscal impacts of projects. And so uh, that's an important part of that uh, economic development incentive process because we want to be able to evaluate what the, uh, what the positive benefits are and so we could, we could relate those and, and use those as part of the analysis. Uh, we've also uh, have been developing the Opportunity Zone Prospectus and a Business Resource Guide, both of those to help guide businesses through uh, the, the city's processes. We worked as part of a um, region-wide collaboration in looking at, uh, with CAPK, looking at the development of a certified dev development financial institution, and we're uh, re getting really close to having one of those um, uh, local uh, designated uh, financing for businesses here in the, uh, located in Bakersfield. And then the last thing is we've established a framework by, uh, for providing incentives on a project by project basis. And in this case, we're utilizing the framework that is provided uh, through state regulation. Uh, and we don't have to actually create anything more other than what we have available to us uh, through the EOA process and other uh, areas in order to move that forward on a case by case basis. The next strategy is launching awareness uh, building of, uh, through an economic development marketing uh, program. Uh, PickBakersill.us continues to serve as that landing page for uh, economic development uh, and provides all of the necessary information for the site selection uh, process. We have procured a database of targeted businesses and which also provides us the opportunity to use uh, artificial intelligence to determine uh, what industries, not only what industry activity is taking place, but what specific businesses uh, might be positioned to, uh, to grow and to expand. We've per performed some outreach to uh, targeted firms, uh, but more importantly, in this fiscal year, 
Uh, we are currently in the process of negotiating agreements with uh, two, or, two organizations that will provide direct market outreach uh, for the city of Bakersfield in different markets and different industry segments. So this will extend the work that we do here locally by providing an, an external um, uh, marketing uh, reach. And then as I mentioned, we've had um, uh, increased co uh, coordination uh, and work with current EDC. Next strategy is enhancing our interface with education and workforce development partners. Uh, for this strategy, we've actually been meeting regularly with CSU Bakersfield and, and uh, Kern Community College District staff uh, to talk about and, and to coordinate our economic development and our workforce development and education initiatives. And through this has developed an, a number of different uh, uh, partnerships and, and opportunities, uh, some of which I'll, I'll um, uh, share in some of the other strategies. Uh, we've been able to provide support for both CSUB and KCCD on grants and program initiatives that they're doing uh, using um, our economic development strategy to align with that. Uh, and then we've also been engaged in collaboration beyond uh, the uh, the borders of Kern County with UC Merced, with CSU Fresno, and with Arizona State University on a variety of very specific uh, initiatives that would bring value to some of the strategies that we have in our economic development strategic plan. The next strategy is to uh, elevate our reputation for uh, being business development friendly, uh, and our goal there, of course, is to be the, the most business friendly city in California. Uh, we've assisted a number of businesses with, uh, with their expansion and location uh, projects. We've worked with a number of local developers. Uh, we uh, Internally, we have regular uh, meetings uh, between the various departments to address some of the uh, business success opportunities and some of the challenges that businesses are facing with their expansion or the, their development plans. And I think a big key to uh, our friendliness, it will be, or, or is, I should say, uh, since it's now live, is the Evolve software, which allows for electronic uh, permitting process through DS and uh, the other various uh, departments. The next strategy is to coordinate with regional partners on a variety of different uh, areas. Uh, we've worked with our regional partners to complete the countywide economic development strategy, which is a precursor to various federal funding uh, opportunities. Uh, we were involved in the coalition to ensure that Kern County was maintained as, as its own economic development region uh, that's designated by the state. And uh, this uh, happens to come with a, a you know, some direct attention from some diff some programs such as the Community uh, Economic Resilience uh, Fund. Uh, we've led countywide efforts on the development of community resilience through the microgrid initiative and that uh, the Department of Energy's designation uh, for a partnership that I'll talk about in a minute, that one is one of those ones where we're actually leading that out on a region-wide basis. Um, and then the, the uh, most recent thing we were involved in is with uh, a public and private group uh, that is going after a $1 billion grant uh, for uh, direct air capture um, projects here in Kern County. This uh, next area is to pursue external funding sources. Uh, we've been, we, we've had uh, some um, good, good luck in this uh, area over this last uh, year. We were, uh, we've received a $500,000 Brownfields uh, grant through the federal EDA. Uh, we, the $10,000 IHUB grant through the department or through the state uh, GoBiz office. As I mentioned, the community leaps technical assistance. It's not dollars, but technical assistance that is helping with uh, microgrid development. We've got a, a pending application in for 25 or $29 million with uh, transformative climate communities. Uh, we are uh, competing for $500,000 for an agrivoltaics grant uh, in partnership with ASU and UC Merced. And the SURF planning grant, which we have our EDSP written into as part of the implementation, is pending review by the state. On financing mechanisms to support real estate in uh, underserved and underdeveloped neighborhoods, uh, we've been utilizing ARPA funding uh, to stimulate uh, development in, in these underserved neighborhoods. Uh, we're doing a cultural resources survey, which is the precursor to the Mills Act and, 
and eventually to a business improvement district. Uh, we've been deploying uh, at least the process or developing the, the uh, de for deployment, the process for tax increment uh, financing through the EOA areas. And then lastly, uh, creating a process for the use of reimbursement agreements and other creative forms of financing to promote um, development in these targeted areas. And then uh, another strategy is really a quality of place initiative. Uh, the general plan process will actually contribute uh, a lot to this, um, uh, to this conversation. Uh, but this fiscal year, we will be doing the, um, some placemaking vis visualization concepts so that we can demonstrate what uh, downtown could look like at a build out, a scenario what MLK Boulevard could look, at, look like at that build out. Uh, scenario and then the city owns 40 acres at Kaiser Sports Village and so we will be doing some conceptual uh, plans uh, for that as well. These will all help us in our marketing efforts um, as we promote these different areas. Next is our downtown um, positioning uh, for uh, as a regional center for housing for employment and for arts and culture. Uh, we have um, a, a agreement coming forth to uh, uh, meet our housing or develop a strategy for meeting our housing goal uh, for the downtown area, and that includes uh, inventorying those opportunities. Uh, we have a property inventory of targeted redevelopment sites uh, that we would like to see uh, redeveloped in, in one form or, the, or another. Uh, we have a variety of mixed use projects that have been proposed, including the former Greyhound uh, building and another project on I Street. Uh, we've been recently um, having conversations with KCCD on repurposing uh, their district properties and uh, their actually district board a couple weeks ago agreed to look at the highest and best use for that property, which is a, a nice move in, uh, towards that direction. And then uh, here in the next couple months, we'll be advancing a proposal for the uh, uh, development of the PQ property uh, that the city uh, owns. The next uh, area of revitalization in our strategy is Southeast Bakersfield. Uh, we've been, uh, we're working on the development of a prosperity neighborhood um, in that area. It will be the primary focus of round five for our TCC funding application. It's the exclusive uh, focus for our IHUB designation. Uh, so those opportunities will happen in the Southeast area. We're also, uh, focus on uh, the development of advanced manufacturing industries uh, in that area and turn that into, you know, sort of our advanced manufacturing corridor uh, because there's a lot of industrial uh, land and opportunities there. Um, and then lastly, we'll uh, start to uh, look at uh, strategic implementation of the South Union Avenue Revitalization Study, uh, which has a variety of different uh, goals and opportunities within that. And then the third area of focus for uh, reinvestment revitalization is Old Town Kern. Uh, we developed a prospectus with, uh, for Sumner Station and we've toured several uh, interested parties uh, in that. And we're very, um, uh, we're very hopeful that, uh, that we will be advancing a project, a redevelopment project uh, for that station in the, in the very near future. Um, we've increased the EOA programming that includes the removal of some of the vacant uh, buildings uh, and we'll begin the process of doing some more focused uh, redevelopment opportunity and we're uh, just completing now an inventory of what those opportunities and those opportunity sites would look like in Old Town Kern. Uh, we've, um, we're using our Brownfields grant uh, to do a focused economic development strategy similar to what we did on uh, South Union. And then we uh, launched the uh, uh, Prosperity neighborhood in um, the Niles Monterey uh, neighborhood uh, this, this past summer. This next area is about, our strategy is about the overall retail commercial centers uh, throughout the city uh, and particularly repurposing those that have a high vacancy rate. Uh, we actually just in the last couple of months acquired a uh, targeting system that allows us to actually look at each site and determine what the, uh, what the potential sales and activity would be for that site and then what's, what 
retailers are missing from that part of the community and allows us to use, again, artificial intelligence to focus in on, you know, if, uh, let's just, I'll use, you know, Panera Bread as an example. If that is a ideal location for them based on all these parameters, it allows us to go out and target a specific user in a specific area uh, for, that, um, for that commercial center. We're also, um, you know, again, looking at what, uh, what types of reuses or mixed uses could take place on those, and I think the general plan will be a good opportunity to form, inform those, uh, those decisions and those opportunities. And then speaking of the general plan, that happens to be the next uh, strategy in the economic development plan is to evaluate uh, our land use and zoning uh, policies. And so, uh, again, this is all part of the general plan process. Uh, and I, I know um, Director Boyle is very engaged in that. And um, we, we have a, a lot of work that's taking place, but it's really going to speak to a lot of those areas. And then the last strategy that we have is aligning the city's capital uh, improvement plan with the economic development strategy. And there's been a number of things that have been done here uh, by our Recreation and Parks Department, our Development Services, and our Public Works Department. Um, we regularly, the four of us regularly coordinate our activities and our strategies uh, to make sure that we're uh, you know, we're, we're accomplishing this goal and accomplishing the work that needs to be done in a, a collaborative and collective manner. Uh, we, we're working on the uh, Spruce Up Downtown Initiative, which is uh, geared to uh, spruce up the area in preparation for the uh, tw hosting the 2020 Economic Summit. Uh, we've got the Downtown Complete Streets Project and then the 34th Street Project, uh, which is part of the, uh, this uh, year's TCC uh, ask. That's a, a summary of the strategies and the activity that we've had uh, to date. I, I, I like to close on this slide just to, um, you know, as a, as a measurement or as a discussion of the work that we do, you know, we see ourselves as, as connecting uh, all of the folks that need to be connected to deliver uh, results, to solve problems based on our experience and our knowledge base and our entrepreneurial approach to develop opportunities into projects and those projects into economic impact for our community, uh, to create a positive impact and to inspire innovation uh, in our community. So uh, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Saldana. Mr. Clegg, would you like to make any further comments before we go to council? No, thank you, Mayor. We'll take questions. Thank you. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Saldana, for your presentation today, and uh, thank you to your hardworking team. Um, I will say this is one of the most exciting aspects of um, the Public Safety and Vital Services Initiative. You know, if you take a look at all of those things that we uh, committed ourselves to doing as a city as a result of Measure N, uh, those, those are the things that we absolutely have to do, and you know, public safety and homelessness related services certainly fall within that category. And then, those are, and, and then the second category is those things that we really uh, need to do, we should do uh, for our future. And economic and community development is certainly uh, number one on my list, uh, next to quality of life issues that really will help us uh, create a better Bakersfield over the next 30, 40, 50 years from now. I mean, my, my hope, my big vision is that I will be able to, in 40 years, uh, walk down the street with my grandchildren and be able to point to all the wonderful things in downtown Bakersfield um, as a result of the work we did in 2020, 2018, 2019, 2022. Um, and, you know, that work obviously starts today. I have, I have a few questions for you um, that I, that I want to kind of drill down on a little bit. Uh, number one is, I was talking to Councilmember Parlier earlier today, and you know, we were reminiscing about some of the strategies related to economic development um, when, we, when we first, uh, when, the, when the people of Bakersfield first adopted uh, Public Safety and Vital Services Initiative. And one of the uh, points that he pointed out was that we really, uh, entertain the idea of perhaps partnering with an entity like Current Economic Development Corporation to really be that economic development engine 
um, within or for the city and on behalf of the city of Bakersfield. And so my, my question to you is, how are you thinking about really being much more proactive in, in terms of you know, going out and, and attracting uh, and selling Bakersfield, attracting new industries, but then bringing them back home? Um, because in my mind, there's, a, there's really a difference between approaches when we look at economic and community development. There's, there's a very um, reactive approach you know, we can, we can open up an office and wait for people to come through the door. Wait for new industries to come in and people who are shopping in various cities, wait for them to come to town and certainly give them a great service. And that's a great and important aspect to the work. But then the other aspect is being much more proactive and assertive and just getting out there and promoting Bakersfield all over the country, pushing hard so that we can bring uh, lots of new jobs to this region and, and lots of new opportunity to our region. And, and that, that, that aggressive stance is what I'd really like to see. Um, and so can you just talk to us a little bit about where you see or where you would point to um, as aspects of where we're being very aggressive and competitive? Sure. I, I, I will um, <clears throat> excuse me. say that uh, you know, part of this year and, and part of the presentation, we've been putting a lot of the tools in the the things that we need in place in order to do that. My, my approach to economic development uh, and to particularly to business recruitment is to convince you that you need a location in Bakersfield before you even have decided you need a new location. Um, we wanna be in front of that uh, aspect, um, you know, and, and getting people to think of Bakersfield from a positive business climate and particularly in our target industries. So the, uh, uh, the, the data and the, the information that we have available to us about the industries and about the businesses in those industries, one of the, one of the things that we'll be doing with both of these outreach firms is actually outreaching to companies. Uh, one of the things that will be built into their, into their contract is to have a certain amount of face-to-face uh, uh, meetings with businesses that are considering expansion or that could expand into Bakersfield. So we're not waiting for... Uh, you know, an organization to send us something that says, hey, this company is thinking about expanding. We're going to go out and be uh, proactive about that. Similar to the way our, um, our Visit Bakersfield team travels all over the uh, country to bring in uh, tour operators and, and sports um, uh, events and those types of things, we'll be doing the same thing on the, uh, on the business recruitment uh, side as well. Thank you. If, um, if I may, Council Member, yeah. also just wanted to offer a couple of other thoughts. Um, as we have been implementing our Economic Development Strategic Plan, the B3K Partnership has also been implementing strategies that you know, were arrived at as a, a regional approach. And, and one of the key questions has been, how do we better sell ourselves and target industries as a region? And that, that it's not just uh, City of Bakersfield or County of Kern or Chamber or yeah. KEDC, you know, kind of each um, scratching at the surface as opposed to really having a comprehensive plan mm -hmm. that, that really puts a lot of weight behind this. <clears throat> so over the past year, uh, there's been uh, uh, several conversations about roles and responsibilities in the economic development ecosystem, mm -hmm. I would call it, for all those different entities and, and who's playing which role. And, and who's best suited to play those, and kind of you know also in some ways who's stepping up to say we're gonna we're gonna go and 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 get some of these things done. Um, I would say respectfully that there was conversation about you know where would the B3K strategy um, reside, and uh, there wasn't one one specific entity that said we think it all fits for us, and so B3K has formed a, a leadership council for economic development to continue to drive the work of B3K, and I see that increasingly becoming uh, an entity that would speak and have voice for the region and pursue opportunities for the region, such as this uh, Department of Energy, you know, billion dollar grant on uh, um, air capture. And th th it's really important for the city to play a, a big role in that, but I do see that Economic Development Leadership Council uh, playing, an, a, again, an important role and being an entity that the city would work with to, to leverage our efforts and, and flex more as a region 
um, in ways that we had sort of contemplated, might we do that with one of the existing agencies? It looks like there's probably a bigger opportunity to do that on a regional basis through this new leadership council. No, I really appreciate that, and and it brings to mind you know another concern that I've had is you know it's there's one thing to go out and to sell Bakersfield, right, or try to convince someone, and it's another thing to really try to create the conditions that make Bakersfield the right place for new industries to exist. And what I mean by that is that's part of education, um, but also it's part of you know, making sure that we have the appropriate sites available, making sure that uh, you know, all of those different aspects within, within even internal uh, city government, uh, that those conditions are appropriate and right for new industries to come. And so, you know, who, so, so what, who, who on staff, is it ECD, is it city manager's office, who has that authority to kind of bring bring people together, bring all the players together, and uh, who's the captain? A great question, council member, uh, mayor and council. Uh, the, to date, um, myself, I'm on the leadership council for this economic development partnership. Uh, Paul is uh, participating as well with that group, and, and, and especially in many of the specific initiatives and, and subgroups within um, that collective. Uh, I would uh, communicate to this council that there isn't a particular governance structure that's been put together for what this leadership council looks like yet. It's actually been a little bit fluid. And we're working on that as a council to be able to come back and say, you know, this is from a governance standpoint, we're all committing to, you know, work together in this way. Uh, and so uh, I've been uh, uh, stepping forward uh, in that dis without necessarily having, you know, direct direction from council about uh, what role to play there. But I've been very active there with leadership council just because I knew it was important enough to be part of that conversation and crafting what that really will look like. And I would uh, reflect to what you said earlier, um, many of those uh, uh, diverse aspects that you pointed out, like um, uh, creating a talent-rich workforce, you know, in this region. That's one of the groups from this leadership council. Is to we, we need to focus on workforce development and talent development. We also need to focus on marketing. We need to focus on these industry clusters. We need to uh, focus on uh, site development. Those are each pieces that are fitting into this new governance model. We're, we're taking a very big uh, vision to what are, are the things that we need to address, and then identifying who amongst the partners can take each of those pieces on. So um, uh, I am uh, deeply involved in that from my standpoint, and um, our assistant city manager, uh, Scott Andrews, is going to be involved there, and, and Paul and his team are you know, involved and in full support there as well. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let me move on to a few more questions. I know my colleagues also have some comments. Um, one of the slides indicates that you utilized ARPA funding to stimulate development in underserved neighborhoods. I'm just hoping you can give us some examples of where those dollars have been utilized so far. Uh, let me go back to that real quick. I think in terms of the, the actual ARPA dollars, um, most of those have not, um, I don't think we've programmed anything specific, uh, specific for that uh, yet. The, um, we have been using some of the uh, community revitalization and, and um, the set aside that we have through PSVS uh, mm -hmm. for that. Um, I, I believe that, and I'll look at the slide here real quick, that we said that they were being programmed. Okay. Okay, great. Looking forward to learning more of how we do that. Um, and then finally, we, we read here that the um, city's uh, interfacing with education and workforce development partners, which I think is fantastic for, mention, for uh, things we just mentioned. Um, my question is, how are we being really strategic to address those individuals who are living in disadvantaged neighborhoods and, and working towards our strategy and something that we've communicated on the dais, some of us have at least, uh, to really move people out of poverty in, in the city of Bakersfield? 
So uh, we've been, we've been uh, taking a very purposeful approach to that, particularly as it relates to the grants and the other opportunities that we've been seeking. So as an example, the IHUB designation that we received in partnership with CSU Fresno, we specifically designated Southeast Bakersfield as the, the target area for where that uh, the, the training and the, uh, in, the um, uh, employment opportunities would come from. Uh, and so we, we've done that. We've also, in every element that we've worked on, uh, for example, the uh, microgrid project that we're working on through the community leaps process, while it's a region-wide process, our focus has been on how do we deploy those um, opportunities in the southeast area. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've been very specific and very targeted uh, about where those uh, take place. And then uh, this from in the same manner, we've also advocated with our uh, education workforce development partners similar strategies to make sure that they recognize that those you know uh, that those areas are uh, ones that we want as a city uh, prioritized for uh, those types of opportunities. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it looks like you've been busy, and it looks like you're going to be busy the rest of your life at this point. <laughs> but I have a question on the Launch Citywide Quality of Place Initiative, and could you dive into that a little bit more specifically? Sure. That, uh, that strategy, as it was developed, was really about looking at how we, uh, you know, how we uh, characterize our community, um, you know, how it's, how it's planned, how it's designed, um, how it's maintained. So it's really from that quality of life standpoint. That's the, that's the idea behind uh, the quality of place initiative as a uh, consulting uh, team developed that. Uh, what the visualizations that we talked about is really to give folks the, uh, the ability to sort of see what that uh, would look like. Um, and I know we, uh, as an example, on the, the downtown area, uh, the uh, city manager shared the, uh, you know, a visualization from our sister city, uh, Buchan, and, and it would be that type of, you know, presentation that we're able to, to show folks that want to invest or that we'd like to see invest, what that would look like, uh, what that investment would look like in the downtown area or in some of these other uh, targeted areas. Is it only targeted areas? Because uh, it seems like to me that maybe Mesa Marine Sports Complex might tie into this very well, and uh, the city lights that's coming forward would be another fine example of that. Well, am, we, am I yeah, correct? We, or yeah, we have no we have no limitation on where we. Okay. Uh, where well, we I'd like this to is, have, yeah, I'd like is, to have those included, okay. please. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I just would like to reinforce that PSVS is public safety and vital services, and, and the best thing we can do for public safety is to create jobs and economic development, so it really does tie in, <clears throat> and, I, and I appreciate the work. I kind of remember uh, a year ago that you had a list of things to check off for the first year, uh, you know, third-year goals, five-year goals. Do we have that? Am I correct? There, um, there was a table I think in the in the plan that had uh, recommended strategies for that first year, and so the actually the activities that were reported out this afternoon are in alignment with those uh, with those strategies. Yeah. Okay. If you could so, send that back out to me, what okay. we looked at last year, just to refresh me, I would appreciate. Okay. It. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Arias. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Paul, and to the rest of the team who are doing this tremendous work. Um, I want to acknowledge all of the work that you guys have been doing, which is really such so important and, and important to the foundation of what you guys are going to be doing over the next you know, five to 10 years, which is building out that program, getting the right people into the right positions, um, and making sure that you have all the tools and resources that you and your team need, and even the region, uh, to start going you know, a little more aggressively uh, towards recruiting businesses, uh, building out some of these programs. 
um, and really scaling in a, an effective and sustainable way. So I just want to acknowledge that. Um, I, I've seen the work, I uh, appreciate the work, and I'm excited for where we're headed. Um, I think w one of the concerns that I have is that I, there are a ton of advantages to working collaboratively uh, with the county. I see Mr. Zervis, thank you for joining us tonight, um, coming from the county and working with other partners uh, in the process of building out this regional plan uh, to invest in economic development and workforce training. The fear that I have is that if we don't continue to uh, push ourselves to drive that and be leaders of that effort, that we might lose what our own internal goals might be as part of this larger plan and effort. And I think that you know, it's so important that you know, we have you know, goals within the broader region's goals um, for us to strive towards uh, that are independent but also you know, in alignment with what those broader goals are. And I think that it's just so important that you know, we have those goals internally uh, for our local staff members to uh, continue to pursue that, whether that's you know, business recruitment, a uh, number of programs and grant dollars that we're bringing down, um, community development projects. I know we're doing a lot of good work in the MLK uh, downtown corridors. Um, but I think, you know, the more that we continue to um, push ourselves uh, to meet those metrics internally, uh, it'll help us not only achieve what we're trying to do as a city, uh, but also push us um, through that, that broader collaborative. So I just wanted to give that feedback. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight and really ask is, to what extent does your department uh, interface with development services and the process of plan check? We're not, um, uh, well, thank you for the, the comments and, and the question, uh, Council Member. We're not um, directly involved in the plan check process as a, you know, as a approving um, entity, but we do get involved and engaged in a variety of different projects. Um, I communicate regularly with my counterpart, uh, Chris Boyle, when, whenever we receive a call from a developer or a business that, it, you know, might have a question about where their, their process is. Um, they are very quick to respond and to um, and to provide that that information and insight. And so, we do have a very close relationship. And I think folks have learned now to you know call our office and and we can you know serve. That's the ombudsman role that we play on behalf of the city. Um, as uh, as uh, David Lyman, I've heard him make this reference uh, before about being the personal bur bureaucrat. Uh, and you know, and he describes that as somebody that comes in and helps people navigate through city government, and that is what you know. That's one of uh, what we do as part of that uh, that role. So we certainly are engaged in that activity. And if I may, Council Member, just just take it one <clears throat> step further. Um, and I think to Paul's credit that he's not necessarily uh, highlighting. Uh, there, there's a couple different aspects. So Paul's created what he's calling a business success team. That's that ombudsman group. Um, that are uh, available to help make sure projects and, and, and proposals that come forward, we find a way to help folks get those done. And of course, we're interested in, in helping you know, any proposed uh, development or project, big or small, but in particular, we, you know, we've been aware of some big ticket items in recent months and in this past year and said, we're gonna make sure those things happen. And so you know, some of our key partners out in the development community know I can just call Paul and he'll help me figure out where to go, where, where, to, where to get this thing unstuck, uh, if they're feeling that way. And then uh, secondly, um, uh, Paul has convened uh, a, um, a group of colleagues on our operational departments where they sit down on a regular basis and work through both, I think, systemic issues uh, of how can we get better, but then also specific projects. Hey, here's a big one coming up. Uh, and so, it's, we, you know, they, they sit down together with development services, economic development, public works, and parks to say, how, how do we find ways to, you know, bring this project forward? And so, uh, economic development does view themselves as uh, that assistance and that success team um, you know, to, to have that customer service level. We, we, we want that and I think do have that in our other departments. Um, but they, they are inviting the development community to see them in that role of, you know, let us know, we'll, we'll help you figure it out. Excellent, that sounds great. Um, and I, I'm glad that there's some synergy and some um, interfacing between your department and what
Chris's team is doing. Uh, I just want to highlight that, you know, across the board, we're, we're facing staffing challenges, right? Um, and I've, I've, you know, gleaned that there are some particular challenges within our planning department and making sure that we have sufficient staff uh, to do the plan check, to make sure that everything's adequate, and to move, you know, some of these critical processes along for these big, big time investments that some, that some of the developers are trying to make in our community. I, and I think that process itself is probably the most fundamental part of what we do uh, to create, like Councilmember Gonzalez was mentioning, uh, to create that recipe that's prime for business development and growth in our community. Um, now, I don't know to what extent, uh, I know you don't need anything else to be thrown on your plate, Mr. Saldana, uh, but I think you know, getting the fundamentals correct uh, to make sure that we are creating that, that right environment for those types of investments is going to be critical. I know that you know, classification and compensation is in the process, it's in the works. Uh, we're eager to bring that back as quickly as possible. Um, but I, I think that you know, we've got to get the fundamentals right um, so that we can continue to develop and um, you know, pr pursue some of our more ambitious goals. Right. Um, so that's, that's something that I would like for us to look at. Uh, I don't know, um, Christian, maybe you have some thoughts on how we can bring that back for council to potentially take a deeper dive or even get you know, discussed in maybe planning and development committee. Uh, thank you, council member. Uh, we, we do have an acute challenge right now in our plan review process. Uh, our development services director and, and Gary Hallen in my office have been putting their heads together, to, you know, you know, to make sure we build our capacity to make sure uh, we can move uh, those reviews through on a timely basis. Um, uh, I would say, you know, uh, today we, uh, I, we don't have something ready to share and present, but in the very near future, I would actually expect to see because of the urgency to move on this. Um, on a council agenda, um, uh, this, some uh, items that would add some uh, outside third party capacity to help us uh, in that realm and, and would suggest that we, we move expedited in that way and, and come directly back to council uh, if it does mean you know co contracting for some of those services. We're, we're making some internal shifts um, currently uh, to make sure that we're balancing workloads and, and getting to all of those reviews. Uh, but it is a stretch on the team, and so um, I, um, I would suggest we will uh, come back with uh, our our action plan in the form of you know um, a, a immediate action for council determination to to bring some contract resources in. Fantastic, sounds good. Thank if you. If I can, if I can just um, add um, to an earlier comment, just to, to provide some clar clarity. Um, to give you an example, and I think I mentioned this, we made sure that the SURF application to the state had written into it the City of Bakersfield Economic Development Strategic Plan alongside of the B3K and the County Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. We wanted to make sure that we were, we were well positioned for the projects in the City of Bakersfield to be considered and part of that overall region-wide uh, region plan. And, and if I if I may um, make a correction uh, to the to the presentation to in response to Councilmember Gonzalez's uh, question, the that line item should have said utilization of PSVS and other funding like ARPA. So I apologize for that. Uh, that but I wanted to make that correction. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. We have a rare opportunity with the California summit coming, and then in addition, the two-day pre-summit uh, institute <clears throat> coming here to highlight our region, to highlight Bakersfield. So we look forward to taking full advantage. I've heard some of the people are coming, and we have leaders coming from all over the state. So let's do our very, very best to highlight our community. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. Motion. Next uh, motion, please. Motion to receive and file. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Thank you. 
Motion is approved with Council Member Freeman and Council Member Parlier absent. Thank you. Next item, please. Reports item 3B, citywide high-speed internet. Thank you. Mr. Clegg. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. To provide some context for this next presentation, for some time there's been interest in expanding the availability and capacity to high-speed internet within our community. I think that comes in a couple different forms. One form is that there are gaps in service within our community, both within the city as well as the county unincorporated area that's adjacent to the city that there is not um, uh, access for all residential and even some commercial areas to high-speed internet. The second also is that um, we, we've received numerous complaints um, over the, my time here in um, service outages and in service levels and customer service responsiveness um, of, uh, amongst existing providers. And uh, we, we've been exploring what are other p opportunities and possibilities that would bring both additional infrastructure into our community to make sure that there is high-speed infrastructure throughout the community, as well as, uh, frankly, and I say this respectfully, it's not bad for there to be some competition in Bakersfield amongst service providers to make sure our, our um, residents as customers to those providers have options and, and can get the best customer service um, um, that they're seeking out. And so we have uh, for you today a workshop uh, item uh, on a concept uh, that we have been pursuing uh, that we think has a lot of promise. And I'll turn time over to our Public Works Director, Greg Strakalus, to walk you through that. Thank you, City Manager Clegg. Greg Strakalus, for the record. Um, good afternoon, Mayor Go, members of Council. Um, in following up uh, Councilman Arias's point about recipe for success for future businesses, this could be an ingredient towards that recipe. Um, with this unique proposal, we have a team here today to, to, um, that we've put together to help answer some of the questions that, that might come up. But um, essentially, I, I have the honor of making this presentation from a public works perspective and uh, in terms of infrastructure into the public right of way. We also have Economic Development Director Saldana, who can speak a little bit more to the impacts to business development. We have Technology Services Director Povenost, who can talk um, very clearly on the technology and the state-of-the-art capacity of this particular proposal. Uh, we have Josh Rudnick from the City Attorney's Office, who will be presenting two of the final slides in this in, t in terms of steps for moving forward, if it's City Council's consensus to move forward. And um, of course, we have Mr. Scott Bradshaw here to my right, who is president of Sci-Fi Networks, who can, is here to represent his company and his specific proposal for Bakersfield. So in short, the presentation will review broadband access, what that is. It will introduce Sci-Fi Networks and their proposal for Bakersfield. Um, it will review staff's collaboration with Kern County and the research of Sci-Fi as a company and their work in other communities. And, and I integrate Kern County in this because they have been a partner as this proposal is um, applicable to the city of Bakersfield in the incorporated limits, but also uh, Sci-Fi has approached uh, the unincorporated county areas for the metropolitan area and the county islands that exist within the city. Um, and also we'll just summarize with a uh, potential path forward on, on this proposal. Uh, and Josh will wrap it up with the, the specific steps there. So what is broadband service? Well, the F Federal Communications C Commission defines uh, broadband service as high-speed internet access with a minimum download speed of 25 megabits per second. And um, the best and most efficient way to do that is through a fiber optic uh, connections that allows data to travel at the speed of light. Uh, some of the reasons why that is important because there are so many data uh, devices that we all depend upon. Um, number one, high-speed internet allows us to connect with each other, uh, friends, family. Uh, it allows businesses to, co to connect amongst each other, video media meetings um, and sharing of of data, uh, it's access to information at a moment's notice. Um, so, 
you'll see some of the photos up here, you'll see some medical devices where folks are wearing these medical devices and it allows uh, real-time data to flow from the person to a medical facility or doctor <clears throat> and it will send warnings <clears throat> or alerts to either medical officials or the individual. Y you'll see a photo here, uh, an autonomous truck or freight, um, which would rely on data uh, in terms of high-speed access to data. Um, you'll see the numerous types of electronic devices and also autonomous vehicles uh, and their dependency. There are actually vehicles today that can communicate with sig traffic signal controllers to understand just how much red time is left at that signal before um, it turns green. So that, that technology exists, um, but it's not yet widespread. But high-speed internet and broadband service will help facilitate a lot of those data solutions. <clears throat> In terms of how uh, broadband connectivity exists, we, the center photo here is of a project where they're doing a directional drill or jack and bore to install conduit within the roadway. Um, this is actually an, a step up to open trench method of installation, uh, which is probably the most labor intensive and costly approach. This is a step towards improving that technology from the construction aspect. You see small cell towers that exist, and they rely on high-speed um, fiber optic. Uh, they allow our connected devices to communicate. Um, there are also uh, satellite opportunities where high-speed data can flow over satellites. Now, that, that sometimes weather can play a factor in the reliability of that type of service. So one of the most reliable ways to uh, provide broadband access is through fiber optic network. So a little bit about Sci-Fi. What is Sci-Fi Networks? It's a company that funds, builds, and maintains community-wide fiber optic networks across the city and the United States. Um, if we look specifically in California, you see 11 California uh, fiber city locations that are working with Sci-Fi, but that's now up to 12. There was a recent addition to that. Um, the city of Bakersfield would be the largest uh, area, the, the largest fiber city network that Sci-Fi has uh, approached to date, uh, which, which means that Sci-Fi's private investment in the infrastructure would be an enormous investment. And I, and I say private investment, right, because this particular proposal requires no public funding for this, which is unique. Um, and I'll, I'll get a little bit more into that in upcoming slides. Um, a connected community. So in terms of sci-fi networks, and I'll call it their mission and goals, uh, you know, they, they do want to connect community with high-speed fiber. Um, they, they do want to do it in such a way where they're using state-of-the-art technology, and they're installing that technology with state-of-the-art construction techniques. Uh, they, they want to provide a resilient and sustainable infrastructure. And, and all of these things kind of weave pretty well into some of the overarching goals of, of the city. Um, to the next slide. So let me talk a little bit about their business model. Uh, essentially, Sci-Fi provides the funding and maintains the fiber network uh, the infrastructure that serves the, the each and every that can serve each and every premises within the city, so they'll pass by every single resident and business, um, which means they're working on both sides of the street. Their infrastructure is on both sides of the street, and they provide that redundant uh, system. Um, Sci-Fi creates a level playing field by which the operating operating the network and wholesale wholesaling access to internet service providers who wish to provide residential and business services in the community. So they're providing the backbone infrastructure and then an inter internet service provider comes in to essentially light the fiber up. Um, ISPs will continue to focus and uh, in, in provide services within the city. So really uh, Summit Broadband, um, AT&T and those other service providers will continue to exist. This is just another uh, company competing with uh, the public, the, the community's um, internet access. 
So again, sci-fi will own the backbone infrastructure and uh, maintain that infrastructure uh, and repair it if and when it gets damaged. Uh, residents and build businesses will have the option to remain with their current internet service provider or seek subscriptions with providers who have leased fiber from sci-fi open access. Uh, existing, again, existing internet service providers will continue to operate. So Sci-Fi Network's construction approach. I talked about innovative technology and construction approaches. Uh, again, the picture on the left is a uh, directional drill, jack and bore operation, which requires you to still open up the street. Um, but you'll notice on the right an operation that only opens up about an inch and a half to two inch trench to install those fiber lines that you see on the upper center portion of that photo. Um, the, those are conduits actually, and the fiber is blown through those conduits to establish the fiber network. Um, th this, is, uh, this approach moves rapidly, more rapidly than a jack and bore. You'll see the 200 to 300 linear feet per day at a cost of 20 to $40 per linear foot where micro trenching goes much quicker at a much uh, cheaper price. Um, I will say that the city of Bakersfield has 1,300 centerline miles um, within the city. Uh, working on both sides of the streets, that, that's 2,300 uh, linear feet, and I'm sorry, 2,300 linear miles to install this. And um, so that is a significant investment of construction resources. So the proposed coverage areas for the city of Bakersfield, you'll, you'll notice that in the yellowish color there, those are the incorporated city limits. It doesn't exempt anyone. Every street, every resident, every business within the city of Bakersfield is covered on, on this map and um, would have access to this particular infrastructure um, and this opportunity for high-speed fiber. Uh, the uh, purple, Covered colored areas are the unincorporated areas that the county has been working with Sci-Fi to include into um, the metropolitan area. Um, so again, uh, broadband infrastructure to drive economic growth. As part of the installation process, um, I spoke earlier about no cost to the city. So Sci-Fi. Um, would appoint a community liaison to get out ahead in terms of communications uh, with neighborhood construction schedules. All of this would be regulated through the Public Works Department in terms of an encroachment permit. Uh, so we're talking about the installation of infrastructure not occurring simultaneously throughout the city, but over a four-year period in zones. And um, getting out ahead of that, Sci-Fi provides a, a community liaison. Uh, this is a locally employed resident with a daily presence, um, single point of contact, uh, available at all times to address uh, any concerns or questions. Um, and, and really could, could be seen as a marketing approach too for uh, informing folks about the opportunities to connect to an alternative internet service provider. Um, the, these are some of the ways that uh, they, they go about um, greeting folks with uh, eat and greets and the taco truck. Um, okay. So a little bit about the city-county coordination. Uh, to date, we've talked with many com uh, communities. We have, uh, Greg and I visited um, the city of Fullerton and spoke with their public works director and their staff about um, the, the experiences they had with Sci-Fi. Um, and as they worked with Sci-Fi, I think there's a lot of opportunity that we've seen where uh, we can kind of learn from things that as they took the forefront in uh, the, le the lead position, they were one of the first cities in California to actually coordinate with sci-fi. So um, there were hiccups along the way in that process. Um, we understand that those have been corrected and so there's plenty of opportunity for us to um, implement the successes that they've had for uh, city of Bakersfield project. Um, we've researched uh, micro-trenching standards, and again, this is a new type of construction technique. Uh, we, we 
are working with staff now on, on developing specific standards for anybody who wants to come in and micro trench. Uh, we've discussed potential approach or path forward uh, with the city attorney's office, and you'll hear about that in the next couple of slides. And um, Kern County has presented the Sci-Fi Network's proposal to the Board of County Commissioners uh, on their August 23rd meeting, and I understand that went well as well. So now I'll, I'll turn it over to Josh to present the next two slides. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, so what is this, uh, what contract are we gonna use or what is this gonna look like for the city of Bakersfield? Um, we would use a license agreement that uh, the other cities uh, that we have the benefit of looking at and researching and comparing and picking the best clauses out of. And it's, the license is gonna be uh, a non-exclusive uh, use of the right of way uh, so that Sci-Fi can then install and maintain and operate the fiber optic network in our, in our system, in our city, at no cost to the city. And the city will enter into other licensing agreements, separate ones, and with some fees for additional Sci-Fi facilities. Because um, part of running the fiber optic network throughout the city, you're gonna have these other hubs that help uh, move that uh, network along. And so these, um, they're called shelters. And um, those, some of those shelters might be housed on city property and some may not. Uh, now, so we've talked about the license. Uh, the term of the agreement, most of the cities and counties that have um, entered into uh, contracts with, with Sci-Fi are it's an initial 30-year term with an up to optional 30-year um, renewals. So these are long-term investments, long-term um, licenses. And if the, si if the uh, system is abandoned, then the city would have the right, uh, you know, would become property of the city, and then we would, we would own that system. And then just like in a lot of agreements that we have, um, the agreement can be terminated for default of either priority or breach. Uh, the license agreement will also cover uh, what, what um, Greg mentioned, uh, well, sort of a single point of contact, but we would have a single point of contact that could be a, a city employee that does, that processes permits, plan checks, and inspections of each time that Sci-Fi needs to then start uh, micro-trenching throughout a certain area or zone and they need to check and, and make sure they filled out the encroachment permit for that area and for that work, and that they're working with city staff, that we're, and uh, that we would have uh, a, a, an employee, or possibly, I mean, it could be an option, we were talking about third parties uh, contracting out to then help process this so that that huge investment then, we're accommodating that investment with, with a, a single point of, uh, of contact. And Sci-Fi, as part of the agreement, would then reimburse or pay for their fees for that salary or for, for the work um, on that uh, person who's, who's processing the paperwork for the project. Then let's talk about the, the contract also would also have provisions of construction and, and location facilities. Uh, the city would have a, a right to oversee and the construction and, and, and inspect it. Uh, part, part of it's through the permit process, so we would have, uh, you know, um, different uh, issues or what's it called, um, conflicts could be cleared and things like that with, with, the, with the city and, and use, of, use of that uh, system. And then so with the, with the construction of the system, uh, there's also, you know, they have to comply with our code, and we would also negotiate in good faith of, on where those up to eight facilities would, or shelters would be, and, and how they would look like, and how they blend in to, the, to our landscape and all that. And then, of course, with all contracts, we want to protect ourselves even further with insurance requirements and um, indemnification requirements, too. 
And with that, we're on the last slide. I don't know if, Greg, you want to wrap it up. Yep. So just to summarize, um, there's a company called Sci-Fi Networks, and they're willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to install new state-of-the-art infrastructure that will provide the highest speeds broadband access at no cost to the city. Uh, in fact, they're willing to pay the city to uh, facilitate the permitting process, to do the permit reviews, to do the inspections, uh, and to help communicate uh, any advance notice to, uh, regarding construction in the field. Um, if city council consensus is to move forward, the, the next steps for moving forward would be to develop uh, the nego negotiated license agreement um, and define those responsibilities and conditions for each party. Uh, those would be followed by street encroachment permits, uh, which we, the Public Works Department would regulate very closely and develop zones planned with sci-fi on implementation. Uh, we would come back to city council at some point in the near future for a license agreement. Um, and so it's staff's recommendation that city council consider the proposal before it and uh, provide uh, staff direction in, in moving forward with this proposal. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Strakalus. Council Member Arias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Greg, um, and team that have been working on this. This is exciting. Um, this is really fantastic, and the fact that you know they're able to install uh, without you know it costing us a single dollar um, in, in public funds is is really something that's truly fascinating, um, but super exciting. Uh, I, I do want to ask, and this is a question either for Greg um, or even um, City Manager's office. Uh, you know, how are we thinking about equity when we're talking about installing some of this fiber? Uh, it is clear that there are certain parts certainly in Southeast Bakersfield and in my district, um, that struggle more with getting access to, you know, any and, and certainly strong, um, you know, broadband or, or Wi-Fi. Um, so how are we thinking about implementing this in a way that addresses and is equitable? Sure. Well, I think there are two points to, to that one. One is that the infrastructure will be available to everyone citywide, regardless of where they live or what their economic situation is. Um, the second part is a negotiating point within the agreement that uh, Sci-Fi currently provides uh, a condition with their internet service providers for discounted internet access. And I believe that would be a point that the city would be negotiating hold true uh, once a system is put in, pl in place. So there would be discounted availability um, provided economic hardship can be demonstrated. That is fantastic. And I think you uh, answered my second question somewhere in there. But to be clear, so with we feel confident that with this plan, with the um, eight areas that we are going to be installing a lot of this fiber, with the eight shelters, um, that anywhere in the city, limits, we will be able to provide um, access to internet services. Yes, that is the plan. That is excellent. And that's inclusive of county pockets. Yes, th that is true. Uh, now, we can't control the county's approval of their agreement, um, but the assumption <laughs> is that that will move forward in conjunction with the city's um, proposal uh, if it were to move forward. Fantastic. Um, my, my last question is about, you know, emergency preparedness. Um, this is one of the most critical components. I think you laid out a couple of situations where, you know, individuals in our community utilize um, access to not only devices but also to broadband and Wi-Fi um, as part of their, you know, healthcare regimen. Um, and so I think it's something that's super important that we take seriously, that we not only install something that is accessible but something that's going to be um, uh, you know, strong and sustainable. And so, you know, looking ahead, you know, uh, no offense to the representative here from Sci-Fi, um, but companies come in and, you know, they could go away um, rather quickly, uh, depending on economic circumstances and a whole lot of other challenges. You know, so I'm trying to imagine a day where, you know, maybe Sci-Fi sci isn't around. What is the... Um, ability for other companies 
or other industry um, providers to come in and then operate that system that SciFi has already installed. Sure. Um, this would be a non-exclusive license agreement, so any other company with a similar interest um, could put forth a similar proposal to, to do it, uh, AT&T, uh, Summit, Spectrum. So, so nothing is preventing other companies from moving forward in this direction. We would just need to regulate the location within the right-of-way if City Council were to approve a, a subsequent license agreement in that case. Um, in, in the case where sci-fi were not able to sustain into the future, whatever infrastructure would be built would be turned over to the city for its use. And, and that's not to say that we would need to operate the internet portion of that, uh, although we could, but just having the fiber infrastructure for communications among city facilities is very important. Fantastic, and we, we feel confident that there are other players in the um, industry that can potentially come in and operate this successfully. I, I ask this because there are certain other systems that are very unique to a particular company, right? Um, where, you know, the company maybe goes away, they've built a particular system um, that nobody knows, nobody else knows how to use. And so I just want to make sure that, you know, this is something um, that, you know, other folks may be able to come in and operate in the future, should that be the case. Yes, I, I do believe the technology is, is common in the industry. Great, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I agree this is exciting and uh, something that I tried to get done six years or so ago, and there was a problem with the, and Josh, I don't know if you remember or not, the, the city attorney, the city's position was that somehow if this fell apart, then the city would become responsible for, I don't know if they sold bonds or what it was in order to finance it, but, but at that time it was seemed to be a risk. Do you remember that, Josh, at all? No. Um, Councilman Smith, I don't remember that, but what you were talking about in bonds, probably back maybe around that time, that's how cities were were financing these fiber optic networks. A few of them went out and got bonds and, and then tried to purchase and, and build it. We don't need the bonds. It's being installed by sci-fi. Right, and there's, so there's no guarantee and no funding from the city. Correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, is, the, is this like a franchise agreement? Is there an annual cost to the Sci-fi. It's not a franchise agreement. It's more like um, it's a license agreement to, to use our, our right, right away. They're not a public utility. They they build the infrastructure, uh, and um, and it's a non-exclusive right. And so they are not considered a public utility providing internet, uh, which would make it count as a qualify as a franchise agreement. And um, uh, it's almost like a lease or a long-term lease of, of our property. So they're, so they're only two feet down, somebody else is cutting a trench and, and tears their stuff up. Uh, How does that get worked out? Well, then we have that in the, in, the, in the contract, and they would have to have you know insurance indemnity. We have some clauses to, to deal with that. It would just be repaired and by, by sci-fi, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I heard four years was the expected to, yes, to serve the whole city. Is is there actually a, a time in the contract or no, how we, long it takes? We, long we takes? haven't gotten that far in terms of planning out the zones or the implementation schedule. Not, not, not okay. Uh, the other thing was the micro trench. Uh, from the pictures and what I understand, it sits right at the edge of the lip of gutter. And as a bicycle advocate and rider, that is a critical spot. And if, if that is not repaired properly, it's a very dangerous spot. And so, you know, whatever we can do in the agreement to make sure that that uh, is a good, smooth transition uh, would be appreciated. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Smith, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just had one question. So. They're going to be working on this for four years. Are any Bakersfield 
workers going to be participating in this or are they bringing in their own crews? Well, uh, if I could defer that question to Mr. Bradshaw specifically. Mayor? Welcome, Mr. Bradshaw. Good afternoon, um, Mayor, Councilman. I do apologize for limping. I just realized I've been leaning on my leg that long listening <laughs> to all the great information. <laughs> just, just going a bit numb. Um, so yeah, absolutely in answer to the question, Council Member. We, we have uh, what we call our transient crew, which is the specialist operators that are building this, not only in California, but in our over eight states that we're investing in right now because we have 27 different communities across the country. As well as that transient specialist crew, we also employ local people to actually build this. Because the reason we do that is not only to create the job creation locally during the construction, but for every year you allow us to be in your public right away, then, then the infrastructure still needs to be maintained. So those people, what we would call our then, once it's built, our field service crew. So they live in the city, they're 24-7 responsiveness. So it ensures that we're also able to maintain the longevity of that local employment as well. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, exciting opportunity and looking forward to learning more. I have a question regarding the micro trenching. You know, in, in War II, we've been doing a lot of road um, reconstruction work, um, much needed over, you know, many, many neighborhoods that have been, um, that haven't been repaired in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And so, um, and I noticed that the micro trenching trench is um, pretty shallow. Mm -hmm. And I know that in some of our um, projects, uh, oftentimes our new road design comes in conflict with some of the utilities that we then have to bury. Um, and so wondering what your thoughts are on that, how we're gonna negotiate this moving forward. Yeah, that, that's a very good point, Councilman. Um, in terms of, we currently have moratoriums for roads that we resurface for a cer certain period of time because the last thing we want to do is see a utility company dig into that road that we just paved. So, so in planning any construction work, we would have to take into account um, recent work that we've done because I'm not sure we'd want to cut into those roads until maybe a few years have passed. Um, but again, the, the type of construction is, is minimally invasive and um, it's probably one of the best approaches. I, I think we still have utility companies that have emergencies where we, we couldn't prevent them from cutting open the road and they do anyways. But uh, th this is probably least impactful. Anything else, Council Member? Thank you. Motion? Okay, what kind of motion do we want? Receive and file for sure. Yeah, C Council Member, uh, or Vice Mayor, I appreciate that question because <clears throat> one of the slides does indicate that if there is some council consensus to bring this back forward, that we could you know, prepare that. Uh, I, I, we did not agendize this item as a, a voting item, and so I think that the motion would just be to receive and file, but based on the feedback that I've heard from tonight, and I would just ask for uh, if, if there's a different direction from council, if you could provide it now, we feel like that there was positive comments and energy around this potential idea that we would go and work on that master license agreement uh, with this, um, with, with sci-fi and uh, be prepared to bring that back to council. Unless there's a direction different than that, that's how we'll move forward. Motion to receive and file. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Well, Mr. Zervis, you got off really easy last week with the council, with your board. No questions whatsoever. We're really engaged. Thanks for being here. Motion is approved with Council Member Freeman and Council Member Parlier absent. Thank you. And with that, we have completed our agenda. We stand adjourned at 4.58. And we'll start our 515 shortly. Thank you for being here.